104 rockets in a flare-up that only lasted a day, but a flare-up that nonetheless may have long-lasting implications in the Israeli political sphere. Early on Tuesday, the first salvo of rockets flew into southern Israel from the Gaza Strip in response to the death of Khader Adnan, a senior member of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad who died after an 86-day hunger strike in Israeli prison. Barrages of rockets entered Israel throughout the day, and the IDF responded swiftly, striking several targets in Gaza before a ceasefire was announced in the early hours of Wednesday morning. But despite diffusing the conflict in a day, some members of Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition are unhappy at the response. Itamar Ben-Gvir's Jewish Power Party has announced that it will boycott voting with the government in the Knesset to protest the, quote, feeble response. The right-wing bloc came into power in November's elections following promises to tighten security, but has seen its popularity fade due to the fallout from the judicial overhaul and the wave of terror attacks in Israel. Could these internal struggles, coinciding with weak poll numbers and a budget that needs to be passed by the end of the month, lead to the end of the Benjamin Netanyahu government? Was the government's response to the rockets from Gaza too feeble or justified? How can Israel defuse tensions with Palestinians? What's next for the Benjamin Netanyahu government? So let's get to it. What's next for the Benjamin Netanyahu government? As always, we begin with our quick fire round, 30 seconds each. We'll let your initial uh, stance on the matter and we'll pick it up uh, from there. So Nitsana Darshana Leitner, please take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Well, Netanyahu needs to recalculate his role. The government under his leadership is in a chaos. The, uh, he reads the polls, he sees the, uh, what public thinks is about his government in all respects, and he understands that he has no choice and uh, he will have to take a determined and effective security action to respond to the current wave of terrorism uh, in order to restore the deterrence and sense of personal security. Michael Kleiner, your thoughts? Oh, the good news is the elections are due in November uh, 2026. Oh. Uh, we, I, I'm sure that uh, in the next months, uh, both economically, uh, the government will uh, find a way to pass a budget which will give, uh, will give some uh, good news to uh, parts of the Israeli society, those uh, needy parts, and uh, on, the, on, the, on the security issues, undoubtedly very soon, uh, there will be a, a, a harsh answer that Mr. Reiter, Itamar ben -Gvir will be very happy like every yeah. other Israeli. Okay, Yuri Wappenheimer, your take? I do think it's a dramatic day for this government. Netanyahu, in many ways, is trying to restart his government and to make it very clear that he is the boss and this government doesn't belong to Ben Gvir. Uh, this was not the case until now. The good news for Netanyahu is that, of course, no one in this coalition has no other alternative but this coalition. The polls are very clear. If we will go for an early, early election, this coalition will lose. Therefore, I don't believe that uh, Ben Gvir and the uh, auto religious and the others will do really something significant to take down the government. Well, before we uh, dive in uh, further into politics, and let's feel free, of course, to interact from this point onwards, I do want to stay with the Israeli reaction um, uh, to the uh, rockets from uh, from Gaza. Uh, and Yariv, I would like to begin with you. Too soft or responsible? What do you make of it? I think it's responsible. I think that uh, Israel has nothing to gain from another circle of violence between us and Gaza. We don't have any goals to achieve in, Ga on, in Gaza. And there is no uh, reason to restart again a, a, an army operation, a military operation in Gaza. The, the, the end goal will be the, the starting point. Therefore, I think that Netanyahu show responsibility and he acts in a, in a more a, a, a pragmatic way than what we, uh, what we had and until now with this government. And uh, I can understand the anger of the right wing, but the anger is not against Netanyahu, it's against reality. You have nothing to gain fighting again with Gaza, nothing. You will have just casualties, people going to the shelters, and we will not get uh, any, any achievement uh, out of it. Therefore, mm -hmm. this was the most reasonable decision to make, not for the first time in Netanyahu. And he has an experience, he knows what is to start an operation and, and, and yeah. without knowing when it's going to be end. Nitsana, what do you think? 
Well, I, I disagree. Uh, we went through a day of terror. Uh, 100 rockets were shot uh, into uh, Israel uh, overnight. And uh, in the morning, we hear from Islamic Jihad uh, that uh, they announced on a ceasefire, not the IDF spokesman, but the Islamic Jihad. They, they shot what they want, they attack. Repeatedly, uh, we see it from Gaza, we see it from Judea and Samaria, and um, there is no restoring sense of security and deterrence. There is zero initiative. The uh, IDF uh, uh, leaders and the uh, other heads of the uh, uh, military system are sitting and they determine the policy of the government. This is not how you restore the terror. This is not how you react. You don't let the terror organization manage your country. And therefore, in order to um, to initiate and to uh, give some sense of security to the people in Israel and to the people in the South, Netanyahu has to act. I, I need to remind you that in this uh, case, we got an, a Palestinian prisoner that died from a hunger strike. It, this has never happened in the past. In the past, in the past, the Israeli government was smart enough to go to some kind of an agreement with these uh, 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 prisoners, in, including this one specifically. Eight, pa eight times he started the hunger strike, and we got an agreement with him. This is the first time that Israel allowed a Palestinian uh, uh, a prisoner to die, and this is the the outcome of that. If we were smart Gary, enough, we would never get know, into this very difficult Gary. situation. No, you know, it's this not true. Uh, you are, no, you are the terrorists don't need any reason to start a war and terror attacks against That's Israelis. not true. That's they, not true. We, we, had, we had one year that yeah, was a to, you know totally you know, quiet. Israel should not Israel to sell with him a couple of times. He repeatedly goes on hunger strike. It's impossible. And you know what? In the United States, it, uh, the, the, uh, the prison authorities would have shut the tube into his mouth and fit him in force and not let him become a martyr and, 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 and a shaheed and raise the uh, so-called response and the anger in the range of the I, I was yesterday interviewed by a foreign television, so I learned the facts. The reason uh, um, that uh, this Mr. Uh, um, this prisoner died was the fact that this time, unlike the pre previous prisoners, he was not in an a, a, a administrative detention as he was in all the cases in the past. But this time they indicted him. And he was about uh, Do you know the blame? They, they blame him yes, of okay. incitement. It's detained. not a terrorist that is yes. taking a gun to fight Israelis. What, incitement. What, what this is this is not a real a, 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 something significant yeah, that you need to pick people in, a, 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 in jail for that. It can be incitement, it can be holding a gun, it can be. So Ben Gvir should be in jail as well. He also use incitement. We, we really want well. to hear all of you. It's difficult when you all speak together. Yeah, Mr. Kleiner. You needed a decision of a judge because he was uh, because he was detained uh, according to the legal procedure, and you couldn't feed him by a decision of the court uh, of the prison authority as it was the case in the past. They went to court, asked the judge permission to feed him by force, as they did when he was an administrative administrative uh, detainee. And the permission was not given because the judge said he's adult enough and he can decide whether he wants to eat or not. So if okay. you all the time speak against administration and administrative detentions, this time he died because he was not in administrative de but, but detention. Ben, now, ben, uh, let's not forget, Mr. Kleiner, let's not forget, he was no, not blamed. Yeah. Uh, let me answer to the basic uh, question which you and uh, Nitsana did answer. Uh, after uh, Yariv uh, defended so much, so nicely uh, the government's uh, decision, yeah. I can afford <laughs> to criticize it and say that we cannot tolerate the situation that citizens in the southern part of Israel are exposed each time Hamas or Jihad wanted to a, a tax, and uh, uh, we had to react yesterday. Uh, this okay. was the, the, the traditional reaction, mm -hmm. but in the future we shall have, have to do very soon something basic that will really deter Hamas 
and uh, uh, allow the okay. people of the north to uh, uh, sleep in peace like the people of Tel Aviv. Okay, uh, I do want us uh, to uh, take a listen to the man of the hour going down south today, and I'm talking, of course, about Benny Gantz uh, visiting uh, the city of uh, Sderot, illustrating his plans to address uh, uh, the Hamas problem, while also uh, dropping in a few digs at, um, uh, towards the certain members of the opposition. Let's take a quick listen. Uh, I think that uh, the Minister of Interior Security should concentrate on interior security and issues of national security or national security are the areas that the Prime Minister is responsible for them. I suggest that you will talk with the one who is responsible and the one who is responsible is the Prime Minister and not the Minister of Internal Security who talks too much. Well, his party is uh, running away in the polls. Uh, simply put, is Benny Gantz uh, prime minister in waiting, so to speak, Nitsana? Well, Benny Gantz uh, gained a lot of support recently from the Israeli public, uh, not for uh, showing a clever security steps or, or security plan, but simply because agreeing to settle and to go into discussions regarding the judicial reform. Um, he was the smartest man uh, right now from the opposition, uh, as opposed to the other leaders like Yair Lapid, that uh, realized that the people in Israel want a, uh, a consensus, want to reach an agreement, cannot be torn apart uh, regarding the uh, judicial reform. And uh, this is why he became very, very popular, even on the account of Likud. I, the, the big uh, story behind uh, Benny Gantz is that Benny Gantz is bringing people that in the past voted for Likud and even more far right wing uh, parties. They are fed up with this government. They don't feel that this government uh, served their interest. And they move and they change their block. And they are coming to the block that is anti Netanyahu. This is the reason why Benny Gantz become so strong. He also gained votes from the left, but mostly he, the, the, the add value that he brings to the system is getting votes from the right wing. And this is a symbol to the situation in which we are now today, that we have a, a, a full right wing government, and the outcome is very, very poor. People see it, and they decide to change their mind and to go all the way to Benny Gantz. Uh, uh, all the way to, to, to the, the extreme the center. center, to the extreme center. Uh, 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 Mr. Kleiner, uh, in the <laughs> short time we have left. Uh, Mr. Benny Gantz won uh, in the past many times uh, in the polls. I guess I wish him also to win in the polls this time. And when it comes election, like always, Likud will win. Okay, on that note, we are Not taking always. a very, a very quick break. But when we get back, uh, we uh, speak uh, about uh, another man of the hour, perhaps the man of the hour, Itamar Benvir, of course. So don't go anywhere a few minutes. And we're back with our summit. Welcome back to the summit. Uh, still uh, with us, uh, Nitana Doshan Leitner, Michael Kleiner, and Yuri Valpenheimer. Thank you very much for staying with us. We're also staying on topic, of course. But before we get back to our conversation, National Security Minister Itamar ben Jewish Power uh, Party uh, announced, faction rather, announcing uh, it will boycott uh, votes in parliament until the government takes a tougher stance um, when it comes to security. But is he just looking for a way out of the coalition? Let's take a listen. I say to Prime Minister Netanyahu, if you don't want the Jewish Power Party in the government, feel free to fire us. If you don't want a full right-wing government, feel free to send us home. I announce that we will not attend voting in the Knesset until the Prime Minister understands that the goal of this government is a full right-wing government. I am the Minister of National Security. It is my duty to participate in security discussions. Prime Minister, I say this in the most explicit way. If he wants us in the government, he should invite us to these discussions, not just as decoration, not only as partners, but also as influencers. So let's get to it. Simply put, is Netanyahu being held hostage by Ben Gvir? Michael Kleiner, quick fire round, 30 seconds, you're on. It's a coalition. In a coalition, you have discussions. Uh, every party in the coalition has its uh, public, and it has to uh, uh, pre present to the supporters that they fight for the positions of the party, and it's okay. And I hope that uh, Benver will succeed to 
push the government, like other parties, the Likud also do it, to take, uh, to take a stronger stand against, uh, against uh, the enemies. It is not done in one day. Yuri Volkenheimer, yeah. Mr. Okay. Now we have to understand it. Yeah, Yuri. Uh, as they say, yeah, yeah. they say, counts money uh, after after the deal and not yeah. before it. <laughs> yes, Yuri. <laughs> Netanyahu need to explain to the public why he doesn't uh, uh, invite uh, Itamar Ben Gvir for some of the security discussion. This is a serious issue, and we need to know why he doesn't trust him. He thinks that he's going to leak things to the media, to some other people. This is a serious issue, and I think uh, I, I I wish that I can buy what uh, Ben Gvir is saying that he is threatening the coalition. He is not going to go out from this coalition. He doesn't have any alternative. He doesn't want to see to be in another election, not now at least. So I'm not taking his threat seriously this okay. time as well. Nitsana. Once I agree with Yari, Ben Gvir was left out from the security discussions. Netanyahu discussed everything with Gallant and the heads of the security system. And Ben Gvir is furious about it and creates a crisis. Speaks against Netanyahu, say that the government has no right to exist. However, Ben Gvir threatens with a gun without bullets. He is in the lowest period without achievements, with a sea of criticism, and Netanyahu knows that. So I guess in the next days, we will see who's being held hostage by who. And in a matter of fact, yeah. uh, Ben Gvir does, does have a gun Eli, with bullets, Eli, uh, always with him. We need to remember Eli, Eli, that as yeah. well. Michael. I, uh, I, you spoke, but I didn't yet. Eli, you have a historic achievement. Uh, I guess it's the first time which I remember that Nitsana and me agree with Yariv Oppenheimer. <laughs> well, oh, I think we can call it a day, we can call it a week. Uh, uh, let, let me destroy the party. I, I, I think that uh, uh, the fact that Netanyahu de doesn't invite him to the to the meetings, to the security meetings, no, says something cabinet. that you, you cannot trust him. him. That he, that he, 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 he is a convicted uh, supporter of terror, the and there is a reason why he's not being invited. No one can trust this guy. He's a danger for Israeli security. This is the outcome of this decision. Wait, 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 one second. He's a legitimate minister, he's a member of cabinet, he has okay. to be invited, he has to get his influence, and he's a member of coalition. Tomorrow, as there will be another coalition, so the other parties will influence yeah, in this okay. coalition. He is an important partner and is listened to, and the policy of the government is influenced by his positions. Nitana, please. A lot of things in Netanyahu's government are unexplained. Uh, I think this is the lowest uh, period of Netanyahu's government. Uh, he shows also no achievement. The economy is in a very, very uh, bad situation. 25% of um, raising the, the prices, uh, the security situation is horrible. The legal reform has not passed. We <laughs> we, we are in, in a crisis. I mean, this government is in crisis, and not participating in in the talks is just part of it. It's not an exception. The, the crisis started much before when he, when Ben Gvir da, got this very sensitive uh, position in the government. This was the beginning of the crisis, and we see what is the outcome of that. It's not just a joke or just just a conversation in the studio. It's about real life. We see the number of casualties from crime in the Arab population in Israel rising to uh, the biggest, the, the highest ever, with the uh, 69 since the beginning of the year, five in the last 24 years. Uh, Hours. This is you. Oh, no, but in the previous government, in the previous government, Omer Barlev took this serious. Just a second, Mr. Kleiner. Omer Barlev in the previous government took this issue very seriously, and we saw a drop of casualties. And the crime was 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 uh, someone was taking care of that, trying to to handle it and to stop it. This government just lose all the brakes, and and the streets are just like hell for the uh, Arab Israelis within inside Israel. But and this is. A Effect, and this is an outcome of the time, political decision to give him the job. 
that the casualties today is a result of the negligence behavior of the previous government, and all the people die that die today are Barlev's doing, not Ben Gvir. No, 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 no. Maybe this is exactly figures. the problem. Maybe this is exactly the problem that uh, the entire political system is engaged in comparison instead of outcomes. This minister, that minister, that government was in charge. It was on their duty. Uh, politics. Bottom line, harming Israeli security, internally and they externally. Speak, they speak after three months uh, in a okay. way that people have to speak after a year, after two years, after four years, not after three, three, no, months. three months. Three exactly. months is more than enough with this government. It is trying to make well, big changes it, it, and to improve yeah, okay. things. To the root and not superficially. How can you judge him after three months? Nitsana. I, I think I think three months are more than enough to show achievements. And uh, unfortunately, uh, perhaps the coalition and the combination of the different ministers and the officers do not work out. Um, something has to be done. Something has to give. Netanyahu has to show that he's in control, and his way to do it is to take any sort of action other from the regarding the judicial reform or the security situation or the economic situation. He cannot be uh, influenced and uh, affected by his minister. And uh, I believe that, um, you know, I think that maybe the key will be the uh, Jerusalem day when we see that uh, Ben Vir will raise the issue of the Temple Mount and the uh, and Netanyahu will have to decide whether to do the flag uh, dance or not in Jerusalem and there will be riots from all over. And perhaps this will be the day that we'll uh, examine Netanyahu's functionality in the government. Michael. In many yeah. In many ways, no. the polls that are not good for Neta, for Neta. The, the real, I mean, Mike, the real, the real test is the budget. I hope that he will pass a budget. Yeah. I hope it will be a, a good budget that will uh, uh, allocate money to fight poverty, to deal with housing At this point, problems. any budget will do, I suspect, uh, Yariv Oppenheimer. In, this in many room, ways, the polls... The, the, yeah. will be a more a, a substantial yeah. solution to the defense okay. uh, to oh, okay. defense and security and police uh, problems okay mr Kleiner. yeah 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 we wrap it up for yeah. us yeah in many ways, the bad polls for Netanyahu are actually good for Netanyahu because this is the best excuse of Netanyahu to take the, the, the leadership again and to say to his partners, we tried your way, it's just a nightmare for the Israelis, it's a political nightmare for okay. me, now let's go for the other way. And with the polls showing that there is no alternative for this coalition, he may be even be able to succeed to restrengthen a bit this coalition and to go okay. to a much more pragmatic uh, direction. Always darkest before dawn. Natana Dorshan Leitner, Michael Kleiner, Valpenheimer, thank you so very much. Pleasure thank speaking you. to you, as always. Thank you for this.